back to my channel. If you're new around here, I am Yvette and I moved to the UK in May. Um, so we're coming up on six months. Um, so I'm taking videos documenting my experience and talking all things travel and British culture. In August, I made a video talking about all my favorite British TV shows and you guys seem to really like that. So I thought I would do a part two almost to that, but talking about all my favorite British films. Um, something I loved to do before I moved to the UK and probably one of the reasons I feel so at home in the UK is that I grew up watching a lot of British movies and TV. Um, so I thought it'd be good to tell you all my favorites and once again recommendations because you guys gave me such good recommendations. Um, I've been watching Green Wing, which is hilarious because it's like black books. Um, Happy Valley, which is like a crime show. You guys, oh, you guys killed it for the recommendation. So I'm excited to see what you have to say for this one as well. So these are just British films of all time. Um, my list, but not, not denominational. But the first movie is a Christmas film. I bet you can guess what it is. <laughs> it is Love Actually, which I know kind of in today's day and age, probably a bit problematic, I get it. But it's still just got that nostalgia factor that makes me love it so much. Um, and it's got so many people in it, Colin Firth, Liam Neeson, Emma Thompson, Snape, aka Alan Rickman, I'm so sad, rest in peace, even though he was an awful person in that film. Rowan Atkinson, if you're British, you're either in this or Harry Potter. Like there's no one left outside of those films. Kira Knightley, eh, the list goes on. Do you know what's like funny? I watched that film um, and I must have watched like a pirated version or something. I was quite young, it, was, cause it came out in like 2003. What's the guy's actor's name? Martin someone, Martin, Sh no, not Martin Short. Um, Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Watson. Why can't I think of his name? I'll put it on the screen. Um, his storyline where he's the stand-in for the porn actors was completely not in the version I saw. So I was like talking about it at school, about how much I loved it. And I think everyone was like, why are you watching? Like that's got some scenes in it that aren't good. But the version I had had them edited out. So I didn't even realize he was in that film um, or that scene for many years. So um, that was hilarious. But Love Actually is a classic. I don't know who hasn't seen it at this point, but it's a Christmas staple in my house and I love it so much. My second one, is not going to come as a surprise to anyone who knows me. Um, also, it's a bit of a cheat because it's actually eight films. You know what it is yet? <laughs> Harry Potter! Grew up with it, was my life, read the books, watched all the films, still watch the films. I want to rewatch them because I actually had a meeting for work in where they filmed The Leaky Cauldron down in London. I was like, killing it. Can't believe this is my life. Australia is so irrelevant. <laughs> Nothing is filmed anywhere. Um, so that was very cool going through Diagon Alley, the real Diagon Alley um, in London just during my work day. Fun. Uh, but yeah, the film's obviously classics. The first one um, when they're all little babies right up to number eight where they're all <laughs> way too old to still be in Harry Potter films. But one thing I love about the films particularly is like the actors. I think they got the, the casting just right. Um, so, and it's funny that like if you look at them as children and you look at who they grew up to be, like they are their characters. So, and then you look at who they grew up to be, Emma Watson's like women's rights on the UN, environmentalist, feminist, killing it. Got so much going on, trying to like change the world, kind of like she's on the Ministry of Magic, which is what the film was. Um, and Harry slash Daniel Radcliffe has kind of gone on to be an actor. He's still acting, he kind of just does whatever he wants, which I think is great because he's obviously got enough money to never work again. Um, so he just kind of picks and chooses random uh, films, which I like because I feel like so many films today are like all superhero movies. So he isn't into that. So he does like um, Swiss Army Knife Man. Is that even it? You know what I mean? Um, and The Woman in Black and like just different like p random p like original stories, which I think is great. Um, because we need that. And then Rupert Grint doesn't really do much. I think he owns an ice cream van <laughs> and drives around giving up free ice cream. So they've all kind of followed the same paths, which I think is great. All the people I looked up to as a child never turned into like off the rails child star. So I'm obviously a good judge of character. Number three on the list is Notting Hill. I didn't watch Notting Hill um, for a long time. It stars Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant. Um, obviously like a staple in British cinema, I think. Um, it kind of a classic 90s rom-com. It is very fun now that you can go down to Notting Hill um, and see the door that he lived at. But like realistically, like pfft, I don't even think in the 90s you could afford that, that um, apartment, <laughs> let alone now. Um, 
because in this in the movie he's like a book a, big, a bookstore owner where and he can own an apartment in Notting Hill I'm like please I can't even afford to walk around Notting Hill it's so expensive like it's crazy it's beautiful but it's crazy um and it's that that bookstore is now like um, a tourist shop which is a bit sad I'd rather it be an actual bookshop because I'd love to go in and like buy a book from there um fun fact it actually the hotel scene um in Notting Hill was actually filmed around where I live it was at Kenwood House Ooh. so um a little bit of trivia that's the fun thing about living in London is like everything's been filmed somewhere <laughs> do you know what I mean everything's a set to something in the same vein four weddings and a funeral it took me a long time to appreciate this film I think I watched it when I was too young and I was like I don't care what's happening because British films have like a dry sense of humor which obviously I love but I don't think eight-year-old me understood and I really just kind of got traumatized by all the funerals <laughs> um I like four weddings and funeral because it's kind of a capsule of like 90s fashion mostly um also it has a bit of that British grunge punk kind of which was obviously a bit earlier but it kind of pulled through a little bit um which kind of highlights the uniqueness of what England was at the time which it's interesting because I feel like globalization now, like there's not that much difference like fashion and trend wise between the UK and, and America and Australia and that. So um, that was thanks to the internet. So this is like pre-internet um, and it's little capsules of everything. And who doesn't love a wedding? Can't make a list without mentioning Shaun of the Dead. As if you watch my other video about all my favorite horror movies, you'll know I loved Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead is absolute classic, anything by Nick. Frost and why can't I Simon Pegg? <laughs> Just Simon Pegg's in Star Wars now. What a career! Who would have thought? <laughs> like, and it's such a low budget, but such a simplistic. I love the the commentary that you can't tell that anyone's a robot because we're all kind of on our phones, which foreshadowing. It is classic British humor, I think. Shaun of the Dead. Um, I'd love to know if you're American if you've watched it, if you like it, or if you don't, or if it's a bit too different. I don't know. I wanted to put on the King's Speech because can't have a list without Colin Firth in it um, and Helen of Holland Carter in that as well it's um, a drama I think it was did it win the Oscar or did it just get nominated um, great acting great budget great cinematography good story it's founded in historical fact somewhat you know obviously creative liberty, liberties but a bit historic so they're all the things I love in a film if you're someone that likes Mission Impossible movies this is probably a bit slow for you but if you like character development plot good acting emotive perfect film i wanted to i'm going to put another christmas one on um clearly i like christmas films keep getting you ready for christmas which is not yet but i've got plenty of them coming as well um the holiday i like this one because it's a meld of american and british cultures coming together um and you kind of see the cotswolds little cottages split with america it's the story of basically airbnb before airbnb a lot of these films just wouldn't happen now because of technology which is crazy um so two people switch houses an american and a brit which is crazy now so i imagine then it would have been even crazier um and then they end up falling in love and it's a big happy family um very heartwarming once again it's a rom-com it's christmasy what can i say i like it a film i grew up watching and i loved was and kind of was massive when i was quite young uh was bend it like beckham great film a baby Kira Knightley before she was Kira Knightley um, about an Indian girl who wanted to play football but wasn't allowed because she has to be feminine um, and be a good wife and be a cook because culturally that's what's expected of her but she wanted to play football um, they talk about like expectation femininity race culture um, sexuality it covers off so many different things um, it's just a great film it holds up really well i really want to watch it again i wanted to watch it before i moved to the uk and i forgot and i'm like now six months in being like oh yeah i forgot i forgot i wanted to watch that film so i'm gonna give it a rewatch after this a classic film and this is once again it kind of falls into that british american vibe <laughs> is about time so it stars rachel mcadams who isn't british but it also stars one of the weasleys who i cannot remember his name um and it's about a guy that time travels through life and he goes back to different points and it is so good so heartbreaking but oh my gosh if you haven't seen it it's one of the best original films i think um of the last few years which to be honest the competition is not high because there's not many original films but it's so good he like i don't know if this is spoilers so like cover is if you don't want any spoilers but there's like his father passes away and then he jumps back in time to when his father was alive and he gets to spend some time with him and it's like his journey with his wife and it keeps disappearing 
Uh, my emotions. I don't know if I can handle it. It's, it's a sad one, but it's a good one. Tell me if you've seen it or if I'm remembering it wrong. <laughs> a classic that I haven't seen in a long time, but I was like, I should put it on this list because it's just like iconically British, uh, was Billy Elliot. I watched it as a kid. Couldn't tell you too much about the plot, to be completely honest, um, but I just felt wrong not including it. Um, but a little boy that wants to do ballet is about as far as... I'm assuming he has some struggles and then he does it and he's enlightened from dancing and living his truth, but I honestly can't remember, so <laughs> I'll have to give it a watch, but Billy Elliot, sorry if that's your fave, but <laughs> what can I say? I have to give it a watch. I was too young. I was like eight years old. Probably one of the most famous British films of the last 20 years, I will say, even more. Bridget Jones's Diary um, with Renee Zellweger. I think it was so successful because it just purely encapsulated the realities of being a real woman in kind of the 90s when it, and 90s and early 2000s when being that like super ultra skinny like kind of Kate Moss look uh, was in. Whereas like the reality is most women don't look like that and she was like an average woman if you know what I mean. Average by like movie standards. Um, and she's struggling with love and she's struggling with her weight. She just like is a very real relatable protagonist and I think that connects with a lot of people. It's very funny, um, very much humour and realism there. I think it went well in America too, one of the rare ones that kind of transcends both. Um, it was very big in Australia anyway. My second last one on the list is Sense and Sensibility, which is um, Jane Austen books made into movies. Um, they've done some with Keira Knightley. Um, is the one I'm referring to, but there's so many different reincarnations of the story. Um, I don't mind them. I wouldn't say they're my absolute favorite film, but once again, when you're making a list of British films, I just feel wrong leaving it out. Um, when you've got films with like uh, Colin Firth and being Mr. Darcy, it's like Pride and Prejudice. It's just too iconic to ignore. Um, my friend really loved it growing up, so I ended up watching it quite a bit, so I've seen it a fair few times. Um, it's very um, Downton Abbey vibes. I do find it a bit slow, so if you find normal British shows slow, do not recommend. But um, I should give it a go again now that I'm a bit older. Maybe I'll appreciate it again. <laughs> the final one on my list is Sliding Doors. Sliding Doors is iconic. I, I watched this one quite late in life because my mum kept raving about it because she loves it so much. Sliding Doors is basically the story of a woman and it's told from her perspective twice um, because it is <laughs> how to describe sliding doors this is so like complex um, it's two different timelines shown parallel about whether or not she makes a train or she doesn't make a train <laughs> which sounds so very boring but it's so so good so in one scenario she misses the train um, and then she gets like a lot of bad luck I can't remember the ending I should watch it again so I can't spoil it so <laughs> She misses the train and then she gets her bag stolen, etc. But I think that timeline ends up being the more positive timeline because then she gets on the train, it's the tube, um, and she ends up meeting someone she ends up fancying and then that evolves. And then I think that one ends up more tragic. So I think the lesson is don't judge a situation too early. Who knows? It's a great film. It's one of like the most original films and they haven't remade it, which is crazy because like they remake everything these days. <laughs> So hopefully you enjoyed this list. Um, tell me in the comments below what are your favorite British films of all time. Please give me recommendations. I know you guys won't let me down. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to hit subscribe so I can see you next time. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye.